my voice and uh, display showing well? Uh, yes, it is fine. Thanks. Okay, then I'm stopped. Okay, hello everyone. And I, want, I first want to thank to the organizer and everyone for giving us today the opportunity to present our study. My, I'm Yuko Kamishima from Yaskao Electric Corporation. The title of the presentation is Domain Mode Behavior on ISIM Machine. The study was conducted with Shu Tanaka of Keio University. The presentation outline is as follows. First, the summary of this presentation, then the introduction and objective of this study. Next, encoding and embedding methods used in this study. Then the explanation of traffic optimization problem considering crossings, uh, the problem formulation, uh, the conditions of the comparison and the results of the comparison. And then the discussion of the results. At last, the conclusion and outlook of this study. So the summary of this presentation is shown in this slide. Uh, we compared two encoding methods, uh, one hot encoding and domain wall encoding on a GPU-based Ising machine using a traffic optimization problem considering crossings and perform a comparison with and without embedding. Results show that domain wall encoding gives equally or better solutions than one hot encoding when embedding exists. The table below uh, gives a brief overview of the results. The results obtained in this study encourage the use of different, en different encoding methods depending on the type of Ising machine. So the introduction, uh, it is well known that combinatoria, combinatoria optimization problems are difficult to solve with conventional methods. To solve this problem, uh, specialized computers like Ising machines are studied. Ising machines require an encoding method to exp express discrete values. This is because only Cuba models which consists of quadratic binary uh, variables can be solved with the Ising machine. one hot encoding is a common method used and also domain wall encoding is another method that we can use. Domain wall encoding has good results in quantum annealing and its usefulness in classical Ising machines is yet to be shown. The objective of this study is to show the behavior of domain wall encoding in Ising machines. To achieve this, we compared one hot encoding and domain wall encoding on a GPU-based Ising machine. As I have shown, encoding is a way to express discrete values. And one hot encoding is generally used in Ising machines. One hot encoding is characterized by the use of one bit per one discrete value. And the cubo for it is as follows. 100 encoding's way of expressing discrete value is simple, but it requires a constraint which needs a dense connection of bit as shown in the figure right. The recently domain wall encoding was proposed. The discrete value of domain wall encoding is set between bits and Number of bits required for discrete value, I'm oh, sorry, um, the number of bits required for discrete value is one less than one hot encoding. The cubo for domain wall encoding is as follows. As shown in the figure right, the position between two bits which have different values is expressing the discrete value. Now I'm gonna explain about embedding. Embedding is the mapping of the problem graph to the Ising machine's graph. Sparsely connected Ising machines, for example, D-Wave Advantage, uh, require embedding, as shown in the figure below. Embedding makes chains of physical bits to represent uh, the logical bits in the cubo. In this study, a Pegasus graph was virtually created to see the effect of embedding. 
The embedding we use is the clique embedding. And the clique embedding has regular increase of chain length in Pegasus graph as shown in this formula. Now I'm gonna explain about the optimization problem used in this study. The traffic optimization problem considering crossings is a problem minimizing the total cost, which is the travel time for all the vehicles. Vehicles in this problem would try to avoid certain entries into non-priority crossings. As shown in the figure right, the crossings to be avoided in this problem has two vehicles uh, col having colliding routes. The problem size of this prob problem is uh, the number of vehicles times the number of possible routes. As shown in the figure below, each vehicle is given several candidate routes and each vehicle can only choose one route. The Cubo formula of traffic optimization problem considering crossings for one hot encoding is as shown in this slide. Each vehicle has a certain number of candidate routes and when one route is chosen, the cost increases for the cost of the chosen route. So that's this uh, hdist. And for each coll colliding route, cost increases. And th this is the h call. And for constraint uh, function, a one hot constraint is given for each vehicle. So this makes uh, that each vehicle has to choose only one route. Next, I'm showing the Cubo formula for the domain wall encoding. The difference with one hot encoding is they require two adjacent uh, variables. By using two variables, domain wall encoding can express the same way as one hot encoding. So uh, it can do the same, it can have the same meaning as one hot encoding. In this formula, the coefficient d was fixed to one, and the penalty coefficient p was set to the maximum coefficient of Cubo's uh, objective function times two. Now to the conditions for the comparison are shown below. We performed a comparison of a domain wall between one hot with and without embedding. The problem size was changed by number of vehicles and number of candidate routes, and also the calculation time was changed. The Eisen machine used was the fixed start amplifier annealing engine, which runs on a GPU. And 100 calculations were performed for each condition. Now to the results. Here, in these figures, I show the comparison between the results obtained by the calculation. The vertical axis indicates the cost value of domain wall encoding, and the horizontal axis indicates the cost value of one hot encoding. And each calculation result is shown as a black dot. And when the black dot is on the red line, it means that the uh, results of domain wall encoding and one hot encoding were having the same cost value. And beware, beware that uh, in this figure only feasible answers, well, feasible results are shown. So we can see that one hot encoding had better results without embedding. And when calculation times are, are in, uh, is one millisecond, we can see that one hot encoding had better results in domain wall encoding. And we can also see that domain wall encoding had better results with embedding. So in the figures, figures uh, below, we can see that domain wall encoding had better results than one hot encoding. We can also see that longer calculation time improves results. 
by comparing the one millisecond and uh, 10,000 millisecond results, we can see that uh, the solutions have improved, especially in, with embedding when it's, it's only when we just get, gave a uh, one millisecond, most solutions of one hot encoding were unfeasible in larger problems, but when we give 10,000 milliseconds, uh, some solutions of the larger problems in one hot be encoding became feasible. So next, I will discuss about the results obtained. Here I show a histogram of the Hamming distance from local solutions to the best solution. For this figure, I have translated the answer obtained in one condition to bit values expressed by each encoding and calculated the Hamming distance from each local solution's bit value to the best solution's bit value. The line in the figure is the mean value of Hamming distance of 100 encoding and domain wall encoding. So by showing several conditions, I show that encodings with good results have short Hamming distance from the local solutions to the best solutions. So by seeing other conditions, we can see that when uh, we, we obtain good results, the Hamming distance is shorter. This could be due to the effect of the chain made by the embedding. Here I show a visualization of greedy transition of domain wall encoding and 100 encoding from the same local solution to the same best solution when, embed when embedding exists. This visualization is not the real transition done in the calculation, but it gives us the image of it. In this figure, we, can, we see that both domain wall encoding and 100 encoding, this DW and OH, is uh, making uh, two logical bit flips. So, but also we can see that the physical bit chain, the physical bit chain made by the embedding has increased the total bit flip required for it. This suggests that domain wall is easier to search due to its short uh, chain length. Now we'll discuss about the number of bit flips required to transition from a local solution to the best solution. Without embedding, uh, domain wall encoding requires FA flips for each agent. Uh, the agent in this case is the number of vehicles. So uh, then when we see the 100 encoding, uh, we can see that uh, it just requires two flips per agent. So if FA is not less than two, the bit flip required is greater for domain wall encoding than one hot encoding. It can be imagined that for problems that requires many discrete expressions, 100 encoding will be easier to search. With clique embedding, the bit flip required is multiplied by the length of chain of the embedding. So in this case, the M. And the chain length is shorter in domain wall encoding than 100 encoding because uh, less bit flips, sorry, uh, because less bits are required in domain wall encoding than 100 encoding. So we can say that when embedding is present, the bit flip required for 100 encoding may become greater than domain wall encodings. So for conclusion, 100 encoding, we have done a uh, a comparison between 100 encoding and domain wall encoding based on the GPU based, uh, sorry, on a GPU based is matching. And domain wall encoding was more accurate than 100 encoding when embedding was present. And we think that length of the chain may have affected the search. The take home message of this presentation is use the appropriate encoding for your eyes in machine type. And finally, the outlook. The manual encoding may be useful on machines where embedding is needed. For example, the D-Wave Systems Quantum Annealy Machine and Hitachi Shimos Annealy Machine. Although in this study we use clique embedding, other embeddings 
embedding methods may change the effect of domain wall encoding. So that's all for the presentation and thank you for your attention. Time for questions, comments. So uh, thank you for the nice talk. It was very, very clear. Um, my first question is kind of more technical. Um, so I guess one of the key differences uh, between one hot encoding and domain wall encoding is that to get between valid configurations um, So you can do a single bit flip for domain wall encoding and you know on both sides of the bit flip uh, You satisfy the constraint, but for one hot, you know I would imagine that you have to you have to do a single bit flip gives you an invalid configuration And then you have to have a second bit flip to get back to a valid configuration. Does this it, First of all, is this a correct observation? And second of all, is this important that that uh, um, you that this that this kind of you know having a single bit flip re retain a valid configuration is 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 important for these systems? Okay, thank you for your question, and that's a very interesting question. And uh, first, I want to answer that uh, a single bit flip for domain wall encoding is makes. It's just a transition from a feasible answer to another feasible answer. That's true. And for one hot encoding, it's a transition from a feasible answer to an unfeasible answer. So it means that uh, there's, uh, there, there will be a large energy uh, change when a bit flip occurs on a one hot encoding. And that first, uh, when we, have, we started this study, we thought that that's very important. But then we have uh, observed that, uh, that uh, when there's no embedding, although the bit flips makes a larger energy difference on one hot encoding, the, bit flip, the number of bit flips affects even more gotcha. in this case. So, all right. We may say that on, in this machine, the bit flip, the number of bit flip affected much more, but this may change in other machines. Right. Thank you. Just one final quick uh, question: um, uh, How how close to application relevance do you think that this type of uh, compute is? Is it many many years away, or or do you think that it could be uh, possibly application relevant uh, in the near term? Well, that's very interesting, and yes, I think. The, the, we can uh, use this domain wall encoding in, in edge uh, applications like on, on factories, on machines in the near term, not, not in so, such a far, far uh, distant future. But sadly, we, we couldn't, um, we still can't, couldn't, uh, we're still trying to test out uh, real applications. So I think that will be a future investigation or a study to show. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I have a question, may I ask? Yes, please. You, your figures were uh, those results that satisfied condition constraint and I yes. wonder what was the ratio of feasible solution in each case how to compare okay. those numbers sorry I I don't have the exact number of the uh, ratio of the the uh, the feasible answers but I can say that when when there's no em embedding all the answers were feasible so I'm in this figure of the uh, top Top two, the, the, these two figures are showing all the answers that I have calculated. But in the case of when embedding exists, we have seen that there is uh, many times occurs uh, unfeasible answers. So I'm going to show this uh, supplementary uh, result here. This is showing 
uh, every answer that I have obtained with embedding when uh, it, I just gave uh, one millisecond. So this, in this figure, the feasible answer is just on just the answers that are on the left side. In the very left side, we can see that uh, there are some answers of, that are feasible. And the rest, the, most of the answers are unfeasible. And we can see that in domain wall encoding, almost all the answers were feasible. But in 100 coding, we observed that uh, the opposite thing that mo most of the answers were unfeasible when the problem size was large. Is that so? Is this okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I understand. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, really interesting. Nice to see this uh, being tested out in different settings. Um, are there any plans to, uh, to publish this? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry, well, um, this, this study is yet to be, uh, well, we're, we're planning to publish this in, in, the, in the near future, if it's possible, because as you can see, we have, um, we have, we have this idea that bit flips are very important, but still, we cannot see the if the uh, energy transition itself, the, the difference of energy is affecting, uh, how much is the energy aff affecting to the uh, transition of local solutions to the other local solutions. So if we can, if we finish that, I, th I think we could uh, make a good paper of, of it. Cool, really great, look forward to it. Okay, thank you. One last uh, quick question. Okay, thank you for the nice presentation. So my question is, uh, I suppose that the, the, uh, choosing the coefficient of the panel data may affect the conclusion. So my question is, uh, so have you tried to do the calculation for the various combination of the coefficient of the panel data? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think that's a very important part of this uh, study. Uh, this time, the coefficient D was just fixed one, but uh, the penalty coefficient P uh, was set to the maximum coefficient of Cuba's object function times two. So why did I uh, set this coefficient to two is, times two is uh, that we have uh, done a pre-investigation pre uh, by changing the value one by one and we have observed that uh, it doesn't affect so much to the results uh, trend. Yes, uh, it does. It does. It, it does uh, vary. The results vary a little bit, but um, the trend itself didn't change. So, in this case, in this study, we have just uh, set it to the uh, maximum coefficient of Cuba's objective function times two. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so let's thank the speaker once more. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the next talk of the session is uh, recording.